It feels like every day games are getting more and more expensive, but Mike, there's still a lot of really good affordable games. There's a bunch of even $25 or less. So that's right, we're here to talk about 10 games that we enjoy that are $25, $25 or, less. or less. And we will say, we got all these prices from Miniature Market, which is an online retailer. Yeah. Um, and so that's where we're getting we these We wanted to have from. kind of like a one place that we were Indeed. finding all these prices. Now, of course, if you shop elsewhere at a friendly local game store, the prices might be different, they might but they'll be around that area. And they're also right? in US dollars. Just, just want to throw that out there too. But nonetheless, that. this is, there's a lot of, Great games, but I feel like games are getting bigger, they're getting more expensive. These are all games that are really affordable, especially mm -hmm. with the holidays coming up. If you want to find a lot of like affordable, Something cheaper you can games, gift to somebody. this is probably going to be a really great list. We're going to be doing a holiday gift guide sometime soon here, so be, some of these games might be on that. Yeah. But honestly, this is also a good good thing for that. Good thing to jump off on. Uh, and in fact, we had so many great games to choose from. Like, we can only choose 10. It was like 30. We are going to do, uh, for all of our top 10s moving forward, 10 more games that are $25 or less. That's going to be over on our Patreon. Yeah. You must be a patron of watch that you only got to go in for one dollar yeah. for one month to get access to that video yeah and but in it's fact, over there yeah. you can subscribe for a year and get a bit of a discount you can subscribe for a year for less than 12 bucks yeah which is pretty darn cool so yeah. if you want to check out that video check that out over there make sure to like this video subscribe if you haven't already let's get into our number 10. So number 10 is a deduction game kind of in a, a, with a family weight level to it called Similo. Indeed, this They're, one's real cheap. Yeah. It's really cheap. It's less than 10 bucks, which is nice. And this one, there's a bunch of different packs. You can kind of work them together and stuff. And they're going to yeah. be providing different figures. And there's different sets, like historical figures. There's and a whole bunch of them. Uh, there's my, one of my favorites is like fairy tale characters and stuff like the Tin Man and whatnot. They have really cool art to them. Really gorgeous And art. what you're going to do is you're going to put out a display of, I think, 16 cards. And one of the characters on there is the one that, if I'm the one getting people to guess, I need to get you to guess yeah, you this to, one. You need to direct everyone to, to that. To this card, yeah. but you're using other Similo cards to say whether or not this character that I play down is either similar to the one that I'm trying to get you to guess, or you can flip it upside down and say that it is not similar. Yeah, exactly. It's the opposite of that. So you put up the Tin Man, people might be like, okay, the Tin Man's like silver. So like maybe, maybe something with metal someone's in wearing it. like a silver necklace. Someone's like, oh, maybe, maybe it's that because it's silver, silver. Or it might be like, this is not them. Like Tin Man has no heart. So this person <laughs> must have a really big heart or whatever. Yeah. You know? it's or like, like, oh, they're a generally like classified as good characters. Yes. So maybe it's someone else who's known as being friendly and things. And that's up to the rest of the group to yeah. decide. And then every round you have to basically eliminate more and more cards. And then you will whittle down to just one yeah. character that you hope is the correct one. So it's really fun to play. You can mix the packs around and stuff like that to just have a wide variety of types of cards. I think the art style is really amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of like a nice family weight way to do deduction and stuff. Yeah. You could definitely pair this down and play with kids and stuff. So Similos are number 10. Yeah. Our number nine is a dice version of Rajas the Gandhi. This is Rajas the Gandhi's The Dice Charmers, which is $18.99. Mm -hmm. And this is a really kind of it's not a humongous roll and write. Um, now with like Twilight Inscription, that's like a humongous roll and write. It's not $18. <laughs> but it does a good job of giving you all the feels of Raj's it does. of the Ganges. It does feel very similar to Raj's Ganges while still being a very different game. Because again, it's a roll and write version. And this is a game where you're doing the same stuff. You're like going up uh, the river. You are building out like your estate. And, but this game is does something that we love in ro roll and writes, which is just, it's super combo-tastic. Combo, it's combo, combo. Combos, combos, combos. You get this and this allows you to put Put out like one more path in your estate and that connects to one more thing and now you can get another good you can get some silk and you just combo on top of it so many times it's just so absolutely satisfying and it's to the point now where like we're both pretty equal in terms of like which one do we like more Raj the Ganges or the dice version and like it's pretty equal I love them both so so much it's just yeah. so good they're really fun uh, Raj the Ganges the dice charmers actually can play at five players versus four for its parent game yeah it plays quickly and stuff and gives you a lot of that flavor you're still trying to cross your fame track and your money track uh, by doing kind of Raja's stuff with some little twists that make it roll and righty, and yeah. those combos are supreme, and that's why it's our number nine. Yeah, it's good. So number eight is Sushi Roll, which is twenty one ninety nine. dollars That's a praise, praise beat of price Phil right Walker there. Harding. Indeed. Uh, in fact, on Miniature Market, all of the Sushi Go games, the original Sushi Go Party, now Sushi Roll, are all under $25. Yeah. So take your pick. We really love Sushi Roll yes. because it takes the same kind of drafting mechanism of trying to get sets of different types of sushi, yeah. but it puts them in a dice form where you roll them out, and then they go on to these little trays, and you'll select one in turn order and then pass your tray of dice yeah. around. So we like this for a few different reasons. One, it's fun to see what dice 
dice are on the table, because then you at least know what things are possible yes. to get. You are rolling those dice multiple, multiple times, so you might not get the dice space you yeah, want, yeah. but you know what's possible. Yeah, you know what's out there. And then also with card drafting, at times, people get messed up because people pass cards too quickly, others pass too yeah. slowly. Not you everyone's end up working with, at the same rate. And people have an uneven amount of cards and stuff. With the dice, everything's on the table, so it's impossible for that to happen. Yeah, yeah. You take your turn in turn order, you select yeah. a die, then you select a die, and then you select a die, so you can't get messed around. It's a really beautiful production for a really low cost. Those yeah, dice it's are got amazing. like really nice dice, like custom dice that are like really, and custom dice usually jacks up the prices of games yep. a lot. They are expensive And to these make. ones, uh, this one, they kept it pretty low. And again, it's just like, uh, if you love Sushi Go, try Sushi Roll. Sushi Go, especially Sushi Go Party, has so many different kinds of sushi, but the real is nature is that we're almost always playing with new people so we never get to those other ones so i'm just yeah, like we don't make just use strip of those it other down types. take out all the extra stuff make the production better and make it simpler and just it's less it's less easy to get confused in the whole situation yeah. it's like make it simpler make it easier to play and it's just great i love all the sushi goes but sushi roll is by far my favorite um, and he has 21 bucks, which is like pretty darn good for a game it's with a that steal. good production quality so nonetheless that's our number eight sushi roll it's so good praise Beef to Falarka Hardy. Our number seven is a game that I feel like no one ever, ever, ever talks about, and this is Unearth. Yes, this is a this is a game where you're rolling out different types of dice. Yeah, There's like, D6s, D4s, a D8, and things yeah. like that. I think a D12 or a 10 is your kind of big mm -hmm. die. You're rolling out dice, and then you are assigning dice to these different cards, and yeah. you're trying to have the most power collected from all the dice yeah. you have based on what you've rolled. Think, if you ever played Smash Up, it's kind of a similar situation with the bases where you're putting out cards, trying to essentially get the, the base to its like breaking point, essentially, yeah. and you want to have the most of your thing. This is kind of similar in that way, except for it's done with dice, and yeah. it's just... It's really fun. And it's really fun because you're not always gonna roll something a high value die. So yeah. with your lower value dice, you can actually collect these stones which you put into these rings on, you build a little tableau, and you will, uh, by creating rings, you can then plop down these other scoring tokens that kind of go into the little void that's created. Yeah. So there's kind of like a, a couple different avenues to yeah. explore. There's some fun little card play and stuff, but it gives you that same kind of smash up vibe of like, I wanna have the most of power once this monument card like yeah. is triggered so that I can collect it and get the main boons out of it. Yeah. But uh, it just does it in a fun way and I love the whole choice of like, which die do I use here? Yes. Because I wanna roll a six. You know, so maybe uh, maybe I'll use like my D10, so I have a better chance of rolling above that. Yeah. But it's all fun kind of dice play. Yeah, it's 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 really really nice having those that choice of the dice, and and they're not low dice aren't necessarily bad. Yeah. you can just use them just for something use it in a else, different way. which is super nice. It's also got this really kind of weird geometric art. They're all these kind of like spires looking yeah. things. It's really really cool. You know, the art. characters are kind of like these little sprites and yeah. stuff. and and it's a game that kind of like. I feel like no one's ever talked it's about it. It's an ever expansion, heard of. but guess, it, it kind yeah. of it kind of has fallen out. It's not the newest game, obviously. No, but it's, it's kind not. of fallen out of the the conversation. But and yeah, I think for it's neat. Twenty four bucks, it's a pickup, really. I yeah. mean, I, I really like Unearth, and it's a game that I think y'all should give a try because no one really talks about it. I think they should. It's Do it. good, and so uh, that's number uh, number seven, Unearth. Really fun. Let's get number six. So number six is Quirky Circuits, the newer one. The new Penny one. and Gizmo's Snow Day, Indeed. which is a, a smaller, slightly smaller version of uh, Quirky, Quirky Circuits, Circuits yeah. featuring just two characters. And this is a cooperative programming game. Yeah, for $15.99. Yeah, like. $15.99. So you're trying to move uh, these little robots. Gizmo's a little cat that's riding a Roomba. And then Penny is a snowboarding penguin, yeah. which is objectively the coolest thing ever. Yeah. The little mini on that is adorable. And you're trying to basically get around to different areas on the map to collect stuff. Yeah. So uh, Gizmo's trying to pick up dust bunnies with yeah. a vacuum. Penny's trying to pick up these flags and kind of slalom them around. Yeah. They can kind of slide because they're on a snowboard. And you have to play cards down, face down, yeah. uh, without talking about what cards you have. Now on the back of the card, it gives you a little bit of information. Like this is one that's going to move forward or backward. This is a turning card, yeah. but you don't know what what yeah. direction you're turning, it can be a, how far a move you're turning. forward by three, or move forward by one, or a move backward. You don't know what it is, and so yeah. you can only communicate and kind of like, mm, you know, beep boop. We do beep boop. Like I think you should play right now. And they go beep boop. They're all little know. robots, so you gotta be beep boop. Yeah, beep booping. You know, ones and zeros and stuff. And you're trying to put down. You have to put down at least five cards to complete yeah. your program. You can play more, and every player has to contribute at least one card least. to the program. Yeah. And then you flip over cards one at a time, and you have your robot go around. And you see what happens. And yeah. It's usually not great. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, it's, it's weird. It, it both works well a lot of times and not well a lot of times, which is a good thing. Like, if you have one bit of miscommunication, we're all operating, we think we are speaking yes. the same language, you can get pretty messed up. Yeah, and so, like, it does, you get this kind of weird, 
non-language going on, like non-verbal language. Yep. You're like, okay, I Mike put down a turn. Oh, I know what Mike's doing. Uh, we're actually, we're going to turn, turn right. around, mm -hmm. and now we're going to go here. I'm going to put this, this, this. And then sometimes you're so wrong, but it's it's doable. So yeah. Quirky Circus, the full game, has four different robots, and um, the f Gizmo is the same in, in this one and yeah. that one. They're kind but of the, the other intro three robot. are much more difficult, particularly the last one, the Sushi Chef, is super hard, which is cool, but it's nice that they made this like much more like a little bit more family-friendly version and a much smaller version that's really, really cheap. Yeah. And if you really like this one, maybe then you can pick up the full one. But like Quirky Circus in general is such a cool idea. You have all these different robots. They all program in different ways, mm -hmm. and you're doing different stuff. It's just super cute and charming. And co-op programming is always fun, in my opinion. And so, yeah, yeah. Quirky Circus, especially for $15.99, is bananas. Yeah. And so, like, I'm, I'm all here for it. Number five is actually a big box. Now, granted, it's a big box of a small game, so it's not that big of a box. But this is Port Royal, the big box, which is $18.99, which is pretty yeah. cool that there's actually like a big box version of a game that's under 25 bucks, yeah. under 20 bucks, I mean. It's you know? a pretty simple uh, push your luck game from Alexander Pfister where it's all kind of in the swashbuckling pirate world yeah. and on your turn you're gonna be drawing out cards uh, and that might give you uh, ships that you can trade with. They also might make you bust. Yeah. Uh, there's different characters that give you uh, these different icons which help you toward expeditions yep. or characters that give you powers on your turn. Yeah. And the more kind of cards you can pull out, the more different color ships that you can basically reveal without busting in the yeah. game. Uh, because if you ever draw two of the same color ship and you can't repel you're one, done. you're done. You're done. Uh, but the more kind of ships you do push out, the more kind of cards you can interact with and buy. But if it's my turn, Nick can give me a coin and then buy something else that yeah. I do not choose. And you're trying to race to 12 points. Yeah. So it's a very simple push your luck game. Super simple. Fun art and everything. And the big box gives you all these different ways to play. It basically takes all the expansions and different material and put it into one box. So you have Port Royal. Then you have a kind of even quicker version of Port Royal, which is already a very fast game. <laughs> which is such a funny concept. <laughs> and you to can me. incorporate some elements of that into the base game yeah. of Port Royal. There's like uh, these uh, a, mo a module that gives you extra contracts, big contracts to yeah. work on. There's a cooperative module. There's, there's cooperative ways to play. You can play it solo. Uh, there's all these ways to interact with this game for less than twenty dollars. Yeah, for that's twenty dollars, which is really cool. It's already a Port Royal itself is like a fun little game that honestly is probably you know twelve bucks on its own. So it's like cool, but then you get the big box with all these different ways to play, and it's still under twenty bucks. It just seems like such a good deal. Like you're just getting you get all this kind of stuff. It's like yeah, and it's like it's, if a, a people who like these kind of push your luck games, you'll get a lot of mileage just out of the base game, mm -hmm. let alone all these other versions. So for 18.99, we're just like, man, that's gotta go on the list. Cause like, it's just cool to have like, so much like, stuff. hey, this is like the complete edition. If we want to, you know, yeah. it's like, this has all the stuff in it. And it's $18.99. So yeah, Port Royal is super, super fun push your luck game. Um, and yeah, we're super excited to explore some more of the models even yeah. more. And it's just, it's just really, really cool. So that's our number um, five. Let's get number four. So number four is a, a, a series of games, ultimately. And these are going to be the Exit games. And yes, now, from Cosmos. Here's the thing. I'm actually not a huge fan of the Exit games or any kind of escape room games because they're just not really, I just don't really like them I like much. them a lot more than you Mike do. likes yeah. them a lot more than me, but the, one of the main reasons why they're on the list is because you cannot argue with the value of them. They're yeah. $12.99 each. And it's like literally going to be like an evening of like cool escape with room like deduction. like four people or five people, whoever you're in. Yeah, group and it's like is. for $12.99, especially you're splitting that between five people, is like basically, it's very, very, very little yeah and it's like if you're trying to do if you want to go do a real escape room it's gonna be like 40 50 bucks per person a lot of for times. an hour of fun and for an, you can an evening of fun <laughs> and so it's one of the things we were talking about like the, there's so many exit games at this yeah. point i mean there are dozens it feels like there's there's ones with all different themes it's just such a cool concept they all have they all have at least one moment in them that is insanely clever yes where you're like Oh man, there was this like on the box on the outside the whole time there was a riddle that you didn't realize was there or you had to do this thing. If you did this, then this thing is revealed. There's always something where I'm like, how did you think of that? Yeah. Like Inca and Marcus Brand are geniuses who yeah. are big fans of them as designers. Yeah, yeah. But the exit games are really fun, really clever, yeah. especially because you're all working together yeah. to get to the puzzles. I don't personally care like how quickly we do it or what the score yeah, is. Yeah, whatever. I just like to, to solve the, the problems. You can get hints and stuff if you need, but they're all super affordable. And if you just want a you night buy, of fun. You could buy two of them for 25 bucks. And then, you, okay, the next two weeks, if you have friends over or whatever, you could play these and, and, be, yeah. and, have, and have a great a time. time. It's hard not to have a list when all of them are like $12.99. Um, it's just, it, they're, yeah, it's just a cool concept. Yeah, I totally agree, and uh, I want to play more. Yeah. Summer three is Cartographers. We could not put it on the list. A roll and writing adventure where you're making a map. Yeah. Yeah, how can we leave this off the list? It's $17.99, and it's like, this is one of those roll and writes, or flip and fill, if you want to put it that way, that just 
goes over so well with dang near everybody. It's I mean, so it's fun just, to make maps. Who knew? Yeah, you're making you have a you have a blank map and you're filling it in. And you're going to be flipping over these cards that are essentially going to have like Tetris shapes on them, like L's and T's and all this different kind of stuff. And they're also going to have um, they're going to have different. Um, landscapes on them yep. so like villages or like forests Forest. or water or farmland and essentially you're putting that you can you it has two choices either the card is going to have one shape and two biomes on it mm -hmm. or it's going to have one landscape or biome and two shape possibilities and then you choose those put them in there and then you have these scoring opportunities there's four that you that you're going for and one might be like You'll get points for having like this next to this, or having complete rows, having mm -hmm. everything filled in, having forest touching row. the edge of the map. You know, All, there's so many different scoring opportunities, and then each round you're going to score two of them. So the first round you're going to score A and B, then B and C, then C and D, and then D and A. So you know what's coming up. You know what's going to score. You yeah. know what's going to happen. So you're trying to think ahead and build out for these higher ones, and it's just it works so dang well. It works over and over and over again. You can just play it endlessly over and over and over and over again. And there are some map packs which, you, which are, you know. Yeah, because now there's Cartographer's Heroes, which gives yes. you like heroes and different types of monsters. Now there's different map packs. So there's yeah. a lot to explore, but the base original Cartographer's, which it's I so, think you could play forever, yeah, is so, is good. so cheap. And it's like seventy nine nine. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those games that like, you can play with an infinite amount of people, you know, it's like, it just, it just works so well. It's one of those games I feel like you bring out, you show it to people and then, you go to their house and it turns out they went out and bought it because they yeah. liked it so much, you know. It's just, it's absolutely outstanding. Cartographer's number three had to be on the list. Seventeen ninety nine. It's it's a great deal for a game that you can play more or less forever. So um, let's go ahead and get to number two. Number two is The Crew. How can we not put The Crew on How here? can I put The Crew? It's ten ninety nine. It's ten ninety nine For a game you can play for the rest of time. Yeah, and you can choose either Crew. We personally yeah. like Mission Deep Sea. Yeah. I actually think Mission Deep Sea has even more replayability than The Crew does. But it's like the crew, it's a cooperative trick-taking game where you're gonna have these different tasks. Like the different tasks will be like, I will not take any sevens or sixes or whatever. And basically I'm everyone, gonna take the blue three. Yeah, I'm gonna take this specific thing. So everyone's gonna have their tasks and then we're all trick-taking. Um, and we're essentially trying to make sure that everyone fulfills their tasks. If everyone fulfills their tasks. Make sure everyone tasks, gets the right cards and avoids the right cards. <laughs> exactly, and then if we succeed to do that, boom, we win that scenario, we go on to the next one. There's technically a story. Um, and it's just it's like dripping with theme. <laughs> it's dripping with theme, um, and so it's one of those games that just like you just dole out the tasks and see if you can do it, and it yeah. just works so freaking well. And I we mean, really we really love it as a way to teach trick taking yes. because trick taking games the, the card play is all about kind of this. Um, this language that you develop through card play, because you obviously can't talk about what cards you have. So you have to basically communicate through playing. If I play this, or if everyone plays pink and I don't play pink, that means I don't have any pink, because if I had pink, I would have had to follow suit. So that's some information that yeah. we have. And this is a great way, because since we're all playing together, in between rounds, we can talk about some of those finer points of the kind of communications yes. and strategy of so when I played this, games. this is what I was actually saying. This is what saying. I was trying to say. When I played this, this now can tell you that I didn't have any yellows. Yeah. You know, so there's... So I think it's a great avenue to, to teach people the, the vocabulary of trick-taking. Whereas trick in competitive trick-taking games, it can feel very disheartening because you're just getting destroyed by people who are all speaking a language that you do not understand. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like, exactly. Yeah, so cooperative trick-taking is always great for teaching trick-taking, and the crew is just like... You can play it if you're brand new. You can play it if you've been playing trick-taking games for 50 years. Yeah. It just, it it's one of the best games made in the last 10 years. It's just so darn good. I agree. But it's not number one. Mm -mm. Let's go to number one. Mikey just mentioned Cosmos is killing this list. Cosmos is about those affordable games because our number one is another Cosmos game it's called My City for $24.99. This is a legacy game from Reiner Knizia that is less than $25. I still can't believe this game is as cheap as it is because there's like tossing, doing it wrong. it's not like a big giant production, right? But it's no. just like, it's one of those games where like for the sheer amount of content in this game, I'm astonished. It's a, when we bought it, we bought it like Barnes Noble, we got it for like $30 and we were just like, holy crap, this is insane. Now it's even cheaper than that. And now it's even cheaper. Mind City, as Mikey said, is a, is a legacy game by Reiner Knizia, and this is a game where it's essentially tile laying. You're it's a polyomino tile laying game. Polyomino right? tile laying game, is, really. and you start off, um, and you have these different rules you're going for. You're trying to score the highest points, but then every round, every game of it, the rules are going to change. And there's different elements that get added. So now you can score these things. Now these things are gone. You don't have to worry about that anymore. And like any legacy game, it's changing over the times. So you're permanently putting you're stickers down things, yep. on your board, so your board will be different. 
but it's just like a simple little tile laying game that works this legacy. I mean, like there's a story, but it's like really yeah. what you're there is just for the game changing. It's so yeah. fun to watch the game change. And the story works really well because it's just, it's like you're this community basically moving through time. So yeah. time changes and therefore the opportunities and stuff change. Now you have these kind of technologies really rules and stuff. Yeah. yeah, you play through eight chapters. Each chapter is three games long. Yep. It's quick. You can play through a whole chapter, those three games, in about two hours. Yeah, it's one meant night. to be like one night you play a chapter. So we played this with my wife. And we played one chapter a week. So yeah. for two months, yeah. we had this great moment to come together and play this game, discover what is new. And that was for $30 then or $25 yeah. now, it's, which it, is crazy. It's insane. I mean, it's, and it's one of those games where it's like, we've talked about it multiple times. Like, we're just planning on getting it again. And we're just going to play yeah. it again. Like, we know technically what's going to happen. I don't care. But it's like, whatever. It was the polyome of the puzzle of that was so much fun. And then, and it's so great. And now there's also going to be like a there's a roll and write version of mm -hmm. my city. There's also my islands, which is essentially my city, but now with islands. There's going to be differences, of course. But there's a new version of this. Can't wait. Kind of coming out. I'm assuming it's going to be equally as cheap or around the same. And so I'm just like, man, how do you beat a a really fun legacy game for that cheap? It's just it's insanely I don't know good. How to do it. It's insanely yeah, good. I was I was floored when I saw that for the price. Uh, I was just like, because they could have charged fifty. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which still would have been a reasonable price for a I legacy so game. I think so, too. I think so, But they too. kept it really contained, uh, and it's kind of simple and stuff like that. And, I mean, just, I think everyone should play My City. I think it's ridiculously fun. Yeah, I think it's so good. It's our number one. It's so, so good. It was kind of the the most, the easiest choice. We're kind of like, My City's got to be number one, right? Like, yeah. it's just, it's so good. It's so <laughs> cheap. It's just, it's outstanding. Really give it a try. Give all these a try. Yeah. They're all really, really fun. Again, we have another 10 that's going to be over on our Patreon. Make sure to check that out if you, you would like to. You can see like our patrons to. scrolling below us here. Indeed. Thank you to all of our patrons who have access to that video right now. And a big shout out to them. Yeah, because this list was like, I think we had like 30. There's a lot. And there's, I'm guaranteeing many, many more. There is games that are getting more expensive. They're getting bigger. They're getting crazier. They're getting more expensive, which ultimately is I'm mostly fine with. But there's still a lot of really great affordable games out there, especially the holidays coming up. Like, there's a lot of, a lot of good options. So make sure to look around. Places like Miniature Market, your friendly local game store. Just keep an eye out for those cheaper games yeah. because there's, a, there's a decent amount of them. Yeah. There's absolutely so many great games to play. Yeah. But uh, for us, for now, that is 10 games that are $25 or less that we quite enjoy. Let us know your favorites in the comments. And I am Mike. I'm Nick. We are the Brothers Murph. We'll catch y'all next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching that top 10. We want to give a big, big shout out to our channel sponsors, Lucky Duck Games, Board Game Geek, and Restoration Games. We want to give a really big shout out to Evan Miller, who sponsored the Buzz Murph for the month of October. Appreciate you so darn much. Evan Miller has a great channel called Small World Gaming. Again, I keep talking about it. I'm going to keep bringing it up because I just think I think they're very, very cool. He does these silent unboxings where it just it's just nice music, no talking, and just kind of ASMR unboxing. It's super cool. Um, also great how to play videos. Go check out Small World Gaming down in the description below and make sure to check out the other top 10s on the right side of your screen. Have a great rest of your day.